whatsoever. Let's pause for a word of prayer, and then actually we're going to get into the scripture that we were in last week. There is so much more to that. That's why I stopped, because what I, w- what I was doing is as I was reviewing that scripture this morning, you know I'm Pete and repeat. That's a part of learning. That's a, that's a, that's a part of coaching. That's where I am. By the way, if you want to come uh, and uh, uh, Friday night, probably about 5.30 at Alanson, you can see us play Alanson. And I'm assuming that because you are Nazarenes and good Nazarenes, you will be praying for a Vanderbilt win. Uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, I don't care who you pray for. <laughs> if you can kind of see the struggle that we're in, you know, anyway. So, uh, so bad. yeah, Friday, you want to come? You don't need a football game. Come to a volleyball game. That's what we're all about here. Uh, so, uh, so let's have a word of prayer. Jesus, uh, you take charge today. We thank you again for being able to come into your house and to worship you. I thank you, Lord God, for, for uh, this past week. Busy week, yes, and uh, not so good, kind of good the way it turned out, yes. It uh, doesn't mean that things aren't going to get more hairy and whatever else. But we do trust you that they, they, that there are there are ears that are hearing and need to hear what you are saying, and we don't even know where the soil is. We talked about soil here a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we don't even know where they're at in their soil. It could be good soil, Lord God. But I am there, Lord Jesus, to cultivate a little bit. No matter if it's uh, no matter if it's hard, or rocky, or thorny, it doesn't matter, Lord God. We want to cultivate it and want to make it look as best we possibly can to prepare it the best we possibly can, so that when your seed lands, it will begin to grow. I trust, Lord God, that you will do something phenomenal today. That your Holy Spirit will come and challenge us in such a way that we will be pushed to be a little bit more uncomfortable. Sometimes, Jesus, it's easier to live in the old way of thinking, but if we really want change to take place, we got to think a little bit differently. And, and I, I guess when I was reviewing the scripture today and kind of going over the context that I was going to bring in for, for another message, I thought, you know, let's just pull back. Let's just take a look at the entirety of that context and let's see where we can go. And, and Jesus, maybe... Maybe today, just a little extra coaching we can go through so that we can be the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher that we need to be. We are yours, Lord God. You take full charge and full control. In your name we pray. Amen. So let's kind of let's work this. The best, coaching is, uh, the best coaching that you can get is Pete and repeat. A lot of times I've noticed, and this is something I changed years and years ago, that, if, that to go from one thing to another thing to a different thing to a different thing to a different thing. So I started really seeing series uh, in a whole new light that I would try to develop a, a series around things. But then I found that kind of merging a little bit differently. Uh, that that we really need some repeat, and uh, it's it's stuff that we need to kind of go through just a little bit. So let's just kind of look. I, now I've modified it just a little bit, and I'm gonna look around here for a tissue. I got a tissue right here. Last week, right? Uh, but it's gonna be modified a little bit because I had a chance to think through it just some. So we've got this line, okay? In Genesis, we are told that God walked with Adam, right? So, no gap here. No pretty colors today. Adam and Eve started at a couple different trees, didn't they? They were told they could eat from any tree in the garden, but there are a couple trees in the center of the garden. One tree was the tree of life, right? Now, this garden is paradise. And there are some theologians that believe that we are not going to be walking into a sterilized version of something and that we are going to call heaven, but that we're actually going to go more into a paradise situation. Uh, yes, there may, understand when you're reading John, we're not changing scripture here, but just understand when you're reading John that he was seeing a vision. And sometimes we try to take a vision and we try and we try to... We try to make it an actual thing. Uh, that's the problem with the last day preaching. 
You know, there are four different, there are four different um, uh, theories to the last days, four different theories to Jesus coming back. There is, there is the premillennial theory, the dispensational premillennial theory. That's the, that's the popular one. That's the Left Behind series. Um, that's you, and that's a lot of what you hear about. Uh, Jesus is going to come back. And now there's some variations of, the, of that, but I'm just going to give you the basic one. Jesus comes back. He's going to rapture the church, seven years tribulation. Some believe it's going to be a mid-trib or a mid-rapture trib. Um, and then it's going to be a post, uh, post-trib rapture. Um, that's just part of this. There is an historical premillennial um, uh, thinking, and the historical premillennial thinking is based on the Old Testament. So uh, a lot of it leans on Daniel, and then from Daniel, what that looks like in the New Testament. Um, and then there is what's called postmillennial. So this is this is a third one. Postmillennial is very very popular. It's been very popular among a lot of Presbyterians. This is where things are going to get better and better and better and better and better. And the kingdom of God, we're going to ease into the kingdom of God. Okay, now I know we're looking at our lives and we're thinking, how in the world is this going to get better, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing kind of a downhill swirl. But, you know, I can tell you what, um, a, a revival will kick that around. All you have to do is go back to the 70s. You remember when those kids in Asbury got all excited? That even affected Olivet Nazarene University for a little while. And they could not stop the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what was going on. Revivals are there. Revivals exist. I know uh, there's, was it Brown, is it Brown City, Florida, or something like that, that there's, they've got this constant revival going on? I don't know about that one. You know, I, I, you know I've never experienced it, but it just seemed like, ah, come on, there's no need to gen it up. Um, let's, you know, let's, let's kind of work through this a little bit. And then the, f- the fourth theory is an amillennial theory. And the amillennial theory is uh, ah, meaning not, so no millennium. In other words, it says that the thousand years that's being talked about in Revelation is symbolic. And then Revelation should be looked at as symbolic, okay? Which we do, but sometimes we treat some of it as actual and some of it as symbolic, don't let that bother you. It's okay. We'll get there. You know, it, 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 it doesn't take away. All four of those can be proven biblically in some form or fashion. Just like our Baptist friends can go through their two points of Calvinism and, and be good, and our Presbyterian friends can go through their five points of Calvinism and be good, um, and they're smart people on both sides of the fence. We are Wesley and Armenian folks, so we focus on uh, Wesley, we focus on the holiness, and we focus on the free will aspect. Okay, that's just where we're at. Billy Graham, we all love Billy Graham. Billy Graham was a two-point Calvinist. He wasn't a, he wasn't a five-point Calvinist. He's a two-point Calvinist because Billy Graham gave you a choice to enter, you know, to choose Jesus. But then Billy Graham would also say that you can't lose what you just chose. That's not what we believe. We believe you can walk away from it, but we love Billy Graham. Billy Graham was a smart guy. We love Franklin Graham <laughs> of recent days, right? We love Franklin Graham, but that's, that's where they're at. Now, I am not watering down theology whatsoever. I'm just saying there's a lot of smart people on all sides, and we don't have Jesus here telling us which one's right and which one's wrong. Okay? That's why it's important that we get together with other churches that are like-minded about the good news of Jesus that are not changing. And that's what some of that scripture is going to say. I'll hit some of that. So don't get, don't get weirded out by any of that stuff. Um, just understand that there's a little bit more to it. So some scholars believe, and I kind of tend to lean this way a little bit, that we're going to actually try to get back towards paradise. But in our mind... And in our children's story booklets, what did paradise look like? A jungle with two naked people running around. Okay? Tarzan, Jane. No, wrong story. Okay? Adam, Eve. Right? And then when we reach Revelation, that jungle with two naked people running around becomes what? Streets of gold. Right? And everything centers around 12. Everything's 12 this, 12 that, okay? Uh, It's hard to bring those two mental pictures together, isn't it? Well, I think that's where we leave that to Jesus. Because honestly, I don't care as long as I'm there, okay? 
King James tells me I'm going to get a mansion. And those new translations, I can't believe those new translations. I just get a room with them. It's just like a hotel. It's just a room. They decided to go with the Greek. <laughs> King James didn't go with the Greek on that one. He just gave us mansions. <laughs> I don't know. There's an awful lot of mansions in it. See, you know what I'm saying? I'm just glad I'm just going to be there. And there's some parts of the gospel that are just plain and it will never readjust, never change. And it's the fact that Jesus came and he died for us and we need to live accordingly. That's what a lot of us are missing. We don't live accordingly. Okay, so I didn't water down. I'm just saying it's okay to get along with others. It's okay. And, and but we need, don't argue how Jesus is going to come back because there's four different views. It's okay. But this idea of paradise is very inviting because it begins with two trees, the tree of life and then the tree of knowledge of good and evil or good and bad in the Hebrew. Okay? So uh, uh, Eve got a hold of that. Uh, there, is, there is good, there is a good um, uh, scholarship that Adam was with Eve in the, in the way it, it phrases itself in the Hebrew, that Adam was right there with Eve. So, so he, was not, he was not doing his responsibility, whether it was as, uh, as a man. I mean, he just let it all, all. If somebody's being tempted, don't you think it would be wise for us to step in and stop? I had this experience after, after our failed match with Boyne Falls. Boy, did they kick us around. Uh, the girls still like to go out to eat. So we went on down to the Boyne City, Boyne City McDonald's just down the road. And, uh, and while we were there waiting for our order, um, uh, there was some guy taking pictures of the girls from the backside. And uh, somebody discovered I had to confront and the man was arrested. Okay? Somebody, somebody was tempted. You know, I mean, this has been a long week. It's been a weird week. Then Sherry made me work. Ah. Oh, no rest. Here we go. So, Eve took, a bite, Eve took a bite of that, right? And then what, what happened was once she disobeyed God, not the fact that she ate something, but when she disobeyed what God told her not to do, that walk with God, we have now a separation. That separation that we have is sin. And there's no way that we can jump over that. We cannot do that ourselves. That is all about Jesus. Now, before Jesus, it could have been the blood of the lamb. Read Hebrews. That's kind of cool, right? It, it combines what Jesus did with everything else. But I have to find the difference here. So you know this story. There is no problem with you telling this story to somebody else. That somebody was tempted. And they decided to go against what was God's better plan. And that was obedience to him. It created this, this chasm. This chasm needed a bridge. That bridge that we see comes from another tree. And it was a cursed tree. And that cursed tree, this is what I do at school. Why use an eraser when I got a finger? <laughs> anyway, that cursed tree was a tree that Jesus hung on. We don't know exactly what it looked like. It could have been something like that. It, it could have just been that tea bar. We don't, we don't know. Um, and, uh, and then Jesus created a bridge. He created a bridge, and that bridge is based on forgiveness. But you cannot just have forgiveness if you do not have repentance. See, this is where people are missing some things. We have to be very careful of that. Forgiveness, in order for forgiveness to be forgiveness, there has to be repentance. If somebody continues to ask sorry, but they do not change their behavior, or are they really sorry? Yeah, maybe for the moment, but it doesn't last long if they're back to the same behavior. If they're just going to look for another way to skirt their responsibilities. Jesus then becomes that bridge. When he becomes that bridge, that now opens us up to continue our journey for God, with God... 
And in Revelation, do you guys remember this? Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 22, and uh, Genesis chapter 2. And then Genesis chapter 3 is, is uh, the fall of man. Genesis chapter 2 talks about the tree of life. These two right here talk about the tree of life. And, and there it is. There's your story. There's your story. And if you want to, rem if you want to memorize uh, a couple parables of Jesus, oh, do so. That's, 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 my, that's my biggest go-to with anybody. I have stories. Now, I may not have them word for word at that point, but th that's my biggest go-to. What I do is I take those stories of Jesus, uh, those parables of Jesus, and I pass those along. It's easy to tell that story about the, about the um, lost, lost sheep. And then it's easy to follow up that lost sheep story with what? Why do you think that sheep was lost? If you want to get an earful, you'll get an earful. Pay attention. You will find out where they are at when they start telling you about where they're lost. I already told you about that one young lady. It was, it was you know, happy-go-lucky, very smiley young lady came back from college. I had, I had a, a taco with her, and, and I said, Lord, put this on my heart. And I told her that story about the lost sheep. And, and, uh, and so, she, so I asked her, I said, why, why, were those sheep, why were those sheep lost, do you think? And then she, and then she said that. And, and I said, you know what? I, I think maybe that kind of fits with you. What do you think? And then tears started coming. You know, it It does. Right? Just being, a, it's, it's not a technique. It's because we love them and we're willing to have a conversation. It's okay. If you love somebody, they, 99% of the time, 90%, let's go 75, because I, because I work at Vanderbilt. Okay. We about 70, 70% of the time, they're not offended because they know that you care for them. And if you're just asking genuine questions, how are you today? When you pass by the, the, the person who is ringing you up at the register, how are you today? Oh, fine. Good. Is there anything I can pray for you about today? And then next time you're in the store, we can kind of do this a little bit more in smaller towns. Next time you're in the store, next time you're in the restaurant, then pose, hey, I, I, spent, I, I committed to spending seven days to praying for you about this. Still came to mind periodically. I know it's been a couple weeks, but did, has anything changed? Yeah, yeah. Has anything changed? No, no, no. Well, can I continue praying? Is there anything else I can do? Right? Is it, is it okay? Mom, is it okay? You know, dad just passed away. Mom, is it okay if I, if I come over? I didn't get in the door. But I do have a trauma sheet coming to them because it's trauma. And I used to work um, uh, for the Madison Heights uh, crisis response team through the, through the police department. And so I, I learned a lot of crisis response training uh, down there. And so I use a lot of that up here. I'm, that's, what, that's what I use. And so I, so I get tied in up there. And then all the teachers know that I'm very available. And I would not be surprised if eventually I'm going to have a couple funerals. So... In your Bible, so I'm going to go ahead and direct you to your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 4. We start off with Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Therefore, right, as you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember that I will be with you each and every day until the end of the age. I mean, that's, that's our command. This is, this is not, remember, this is not a technique. I only put this up here. I mean, you can give a visual like this. I only put this up here because you guys know the story. I'm just connecting a couple things, right? I know my crowd, kind of. So, so we're just connecting a couple things. You know that story. It's a simple story. That's, everything's right there. That is, that is the entirety of scripture right there. Everything else, everything else, I think it's fodder. 
This is the entirety of scripture. My journey with God needs to be a journey of holiness. I mean, I can get into all sorts of stuff. I can keep going and keep going and keep going. If I fail in my journey with God, if I start sinking as Peter started sinking, I reach up my hand and I say, Lord, save me. And he will. He'll pull me back up. Do I need to grow? Do I need to mature? Yes, I do. I don't need to stay in one place. Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 11 through 13 goes like this. Sorry, Dorian, I put that in the wrong way. There you go. I'm better now. It was Christ himself. Now, I'm, I'm inserting Christ because it is, it was, it's actually more like he himself, but I'm inserting Christ so you know where I'm, where I'm going there. It is Christ himself who gave some to be apostles, leaders, and visionaries. Don't get too hung up because I think we've got apostles here. Some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. To equip the saints, amen? To equip the saints for works of ministry and to build up the body of Christ until we all reach, till we all, that's inserted. That's not inserted. That's, that's a push. Until we all reach or attain unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. As we mature, as we grow, as we perfect, as we become complete. Right? That's, that's all that same word. As, as we mature... Uh, here we go. I preach too much. I need to let that go when I'm doing this scripture stuff. As we mature uh, in the full measure of the stature of Christ. Now, some of your translations may have, uh, as we mature uh, in the measure of the fullness of Christ. Okay, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's all in there. It's all, it's all workable. Um, I can go either way on that particular translation. Still means the same thing. You know, pretty much it's the full measure of Christ in my life, that that's my ultimate goal. As I am journeying with God, I am becoming more and more like Jesus every day. And when I don't become more like Jesus, then I'm the one that's failing. Now, here's here. Now we're going to now let's go back. Let's go back to that word equipping. You remember, you remember from last week when we talked about the word equipping, it was like a ship that has been out battered back and forth by the wind and the waves. This is, comes up. This is why I kind of stopped in my tracks today and, and did, uh, kind of did a reverse. We, go, we are battered back and forth. So this word equip is a, is a, is a woodworking word. It's a construction word. And a lot of times they would use this word equipped that when that ship would come back in, it, its joints were all out of shape, okay? The frame was, the frame was battered. The, sh the frame was shifted. So what they had to do is they had to shave it down, scoot it over. If you ever worked with dovetailing, and I have not, just seen these wonderful videos and these wonderful tools that will do uh, dovetails, you know, for drawers and stuff like that that you can get fit in. But the idea, you, what you do is you chisel as an, at an angle. You fine-tune it to get it to fit perfectly, that's the word equip. It's the process. And then the word that comes up that we are to build up is another construction word. And this is where we build the, 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 the structure. We build the structure. The equipping fine tunes the structure. Maybe holds it together. But we build the structure, structure to make sure that Jesus has a place to live. Okay, that we build up the body of Christ. Now, that's not just encouraging, but there's more to it than that. We are constructing, okay? Who is that body of Christ? It's not just us folk, it's every folk. I am a firm believer. Being born in God's image puts us in his family. The guy... At McDonald's, and then you can pray for him. He was drunk, about 40 years old. The guy at McDonald's taking pictures of the girls. Is that guy in, in the image of God? 
But was he born in the image of God? Absolutely he was. Sin has broken him. And there is a place in God's family for that man, no matter how distasteful, perverted, right? That's tough. That's tough. I thought I was going to have another situation because the husband and wife that alerted me to what was going on, I thought they were going to go off on the guy. I thought we were going to have another incident upon another incident upon another incident. I mean, they were really going off on the guy. And I'm trying to get pictures deleted, and McDonald's is trying to call, call the police officers and uh, call the local police. And so a lot of stuff going on. And I'm saying, oh, boy, I see this husband getting ready to, you know, lay hands on this guy. And, uh, and I thought, you know, just we don't need an incident upon an incident upon an incident. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we, I wasn't mad, and I, I confronted the guy, and he's shaking. He's shaking bad. So, but did he need Jesus? Yeah, yeah, he, you need, he needs Jesus. And yes, there is a place in the body for him. The problem is, prison ministry, same thing, right? The problem is, he doesn't know that he has a place that God has designed for him. Now, you cannot just put anybody in that place. You've got to be able to take a look at that. You've got to be able to take a look at that place. And that place is uniquely designed for every single person in this world. Every single person in this world. From Hitler on. Okay? Every single person has a place in the body of Christ. That is uncomfortable for us. Sometimes we Nazarenes are more Calvinistic than we are Wesleyan. More Calvinistic than we are Armenian. That's the free will. We put, we put people in a category. Now, I'm not, I am not slacking sin. Scripture is very plain on what sin is. Nothing changes there. There are people out in this world that are trying to change the essence of Scripture. Oh, that's not what it meant. We were talking about male prostitutes, not homosexuals. You know, little boy. What are you talking about? There is nothing. That is all made up hogwash. People are changing scripture so it doesn't say what it needs to say so they don't have to confront sin. Okay, so I'm not saying any of that, but I am saying that there is a place in the body for every single person, no matter how disgusting. What did God say in the Old Testament? He says, I hate the vile man, didn't he? Vile goes a long way in the Hebrew. I hate the vile man. That's what he said. But then he uses a lot of ifs. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will. Jeremiah. Uh, we get a little carried away that God has a plan for all of us. If we don't read the rest of the passage. If we start obeying, then he has a nice plan to prosper us, right? Uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, 33, something like that. Okay? So just kind of pay attention. Now, here we go. This is, this is my conclusion. I've kind of set all of this up. Uh, look at verse 14, okay? Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 14. Now I'm going to read this out of the old, old NIV then we will no longer be infants. Now, this is after we mature to the fullness of Christ, okay? After we mature, then we will no longer be infants. And you guys know that Paul is really big about children and adults and growing, right? Tossed back and forth by the waves. 
Bingo. Wow. Bingo. <laughs> now you're going to think I'm Catholic. Sorry. Bingo. Okay. It's right there. I found it. Boom. Mic drop. Tossed back and forth by the waves. Go back and connect the word equip. Paul's still thinking about this ship. When I first read that and when I first saw the ship, I mean, it could be talking about anything to fine tune something. And then I, then I read something about it being uh, the ships being brought back in from harbor and they have to be straightened out after they got beat. Think about you. How many times have you been tossed back and forth, beat around, and somebody came in alongside of you, got their hands dirty, and brought out the old chisel and started chiseling a little bit and brought in a couple pieces of extra wood and replaced some old parts and gave you some new parts. I'm not talking about knee surgeries. Uh, I'm, I'm just, just talking about the way Christians work. And they start working all this out in your life, and you are ready to go back into the seas again. Hopefully a little bit stronger this time when you get knocked around. It just dawned on me that that's exactly what he's talking about. Tossed back and forth by waves and blown there, uh, blown here and there by every wind. Now follow every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ. From him, the whole body, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Those participating in the body especially. But follow this. Toss back and forth. We have we have we have so uh, so much theology that is based on country singers. You know, you know the country singer is living a not so good life, but yet he talks about mama reading his Bible and praying for him, and and it makes you feel all nice and gooey. And I'm not saying you can listen. To, I mean, if you want some good Christian music, I got some good Christian music. Okay, okay, just come talk to me, and I'll tell you about some Christian music. Okay, it'll drive you nuts, but it's good Christian music. Okay, anyway, so. It's where I live every morning. Sherry has to deal with my music in the bathroom all cranked up. And there I am singing my little lungs out, getting prepared for school every day. And that's, that's what I do. Um, and it's not Jesus loves me, this I know. Though I do sing that in class every now and then when I feel, <laughs> when I feel abused. Jesus loves me. Mr. Nelson, stop. Uh, <laughs> infants toss back and forth. If we don't grow in our faith, if we don't go to that full maturity of Christ, this is where we're going to struggle. Now, I'm going to turn this. Just one, just, just turn this. We're going to look a little bit differently. I'm going to talk to you as craftsmen. You are the craftsman because you are growing in Christ. You are the craftsman that's going to knock that frame back into place of the ship that comes back in who's struggling. We've got to get to the place where we get that skill, okay? We equip, we equip ourselves. But we have to be that craftsman because there are a lot of people, young in Christ or not even in Christ, that have been out on the seas and have been pushed around and they're all beat up. They're beat up emotionally and mentally because they have been listening to the junk of the world and maybe sometimes the junk in the church with this faux Christianity or faux theology that we've created. Folks, I know. Let me give you, let me give you an example of a little faux theology. Faux theology. Grandma passes away. We are all sad. Okay? All the funerals that I've done, I've never said this. I cannot bring myself to say it because it is not scriptural. Grandma is not going to be looking over me. She is not my angel. 
She is not looking over the clouds and making sure I'm okay. She will probably not greet me at heaven's gates either. I will probably not know that she is my grandma when I get there. Right? Anybody want to give it a try? It's not in here. It's not in here. Now, can we have, do I believe that grandma's prayers are probably still working to this day for me? Absolutely. There is some scripture that backs that one up in Revelation. It's the prayers of the saints. It's like smoke. It's like smoke that comes out of the incense bowl, right? And it keeps going and going and going, the prayers of the saints. Do I believe that? Yes, absolutely. Do I believe that grandma's memory and me seeing grandma knelt down? And by the way, my, neither one of my, grand, or my grandparents, none of them were like this, but uh, that uh, knelt down at, uh, by their bedside and me hearing their name, hearing my name being prayed for, that memory, that memory will never leave me. And that's what God gave me on that. But grandma is not looking over cloud nine, watching me and guiding me and directing me. No, that's dark age thinking. And they didn't have scripture. That's where they got it. The word Gesundheit, where does that come from? Germany, right? In the Middle Ages. I sneeze, chew. And everybody around me says, Gesundheit. That is German for what? God bless you. Right? Gut. God bless you. Okay? Why did they say that? Because they believe you were sneezing demons out. And they did not want seven, they did not want the demons sevenfold to come back. Now that's scriptural, right? <laughs> right? You know, didn't want the sevenfold demons to come back and fill you even more. So they said Gesundheit as quickly as they could to cover you so that you would not be filled up with demons again because you just spit them out, sneezed them out. It's not scriptural. It's cute, but it's not scriptural. Okay? So, pause. Now, can we be that person to adjust that ship that's come in all battered, that's been blown around. Can we be that person? And I say, absolutely. And it's not under my strength, but it's Christ's strength in me. And even if I have the strength to quit smoking and to quit drinking on my own, I still choose to rely on him. I still choose to walk with a limp because I want to lean on Jesus first and not lean on me. But I need to do what I have to do in studying scripture and living the way that Jesus wants me to live. And then as I journey, I need to make sure that it is holy. And then if I stumble along the way, that I, that I reconcile with my brothers and my sisters. That if I stumble along the way, that I know how to repent if I stumble along the way, I know, I, know how to, I know how to go back and explain to people that, yeah, I may not be perfect in that sense, but I want to be perfect in the sense that I am completely his and I am going to completely grow to the full measure of Christ. Oh, folks, if I had medication, we would not be all over the place today. Okay? A good cook, they say, I think it just makes a messy cook. But a, a good cook, they say, to see if the spaghetti is, is done, they'll, they'll take some spaghetti and throw it on the wall. I say that's a messy cook. <laughs> Who does that? Come on. You got to clean it up later. I don't even like cleaning. So just, you know, I'm not going to mess up my kitchen just because I want to see if the noodles are ready to go or not. Well, okay, so if, if the spaghetti is ready, does it stick to the wall or does it fall? Help me. It sticks. See, Mo's done it. Okay. <laughs> I just want to find out, Mo, who did this. Um, so 
maybe the Holy Spirit, that there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot in here, but maybe there was something in here that God grabbed you on. Would you allow the Holy Spirit? I don't care if you go out and listen to Christian radio and you think it came from the Christian radio. I don't care. But if something's stuck, don't just leave it on the wall. Apply it to your life. And make changes. Today. Make the changes. And if you don't know how to make the changes, get with somebody and start making those changes. I need to make these changes. Okay. And, it, and we're not talking about sin or anything else. We're just talking about making adjustments in our life so that I can be either a better storyteller or I can, you know, I can be a better caregiver to my neighbors. If my neighbors need brownies, bless God, I'm going to learn how to break, bake brownies. I'm going to use monk fruit and protein powder, but I'm going to bake brownies. I'm not going to give them that highly processed stuff that's going to kill them. You know, I got to talk to them about Jesus first. So I'm going to do something different. Anyway, good? Okay. Just stand with me. Baptist, beat us again. Talk on it. Jesus, this day is absolutely yours. And I thank you, Lord God, for randomness. And sometimes, Lord Jesus, it can be just a little bit too random. There's a lot of things, Lord God, that's flowing here. And, 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 and I just believe that you, have, that you have used this moment. People that are willing to be here to walk in your ways. Hey, we need a pastor here. We do. But we are not wanting a pastor just so that we can have vision again. We're wanting a pastor here to help manage what's going on with ministry every single day that we're participating. Jesus, there are some folks here, good folks, that want to change. But they look back at the last 50 plus years of their Christianity Lord, this is how I've been living, and I don't know how to make it change. It's not who I am. Father, help us never, ever forget that if you can put a seed inside the womb of a virgin, you can do anything. You are the God of impossibilities. And Jesus, if you want this world to be different, I know that through your Holy Spirit, you can dig so deep into our lives and you can cultivate that relationship that the opportunities will open up. Now, Father, I don't know what opportunities came this last week, but you gave them. One was under a decent circumstance. The other one was not under a decent circumstance. But you gave them. You didn't force anything. You just, there was an opportunity. Lord, you didn't preordain that opportunity. But, but you wanted me to listen. And you're giving us opportunities every moment of every day to equip the saints and to build up the body of believers. That's where we want to be. So, Father, challenge us. Make, make us people that are willing to go the extra mile with you in order to be better the next day. But as of this day, Lord God, we're going to do our absolute best. And tomorrow, we're going to do even better with you. We pray all this in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming.